I'm willing to pay $4 a gallon. Hell, I'll pay $15 a gallon because I drive a Tesla. Gas prices continue to be a major concern. High gas prices continue to sting nationwide. Lawmakers under pressure to act. Let's turn to those skyrocketing gas prices. Now to those sky high gas prices. The pain at the pump continues. Some broke dude just put $1.68. $1.68 his tank, man. He's so broke. Yeah. All right. Do you remember the days when a gallon of gas was two fifty? dollars Yeah, well, that era has clearly come to an end. As you've definitely noticed by now, gas is up to four or five or even $6 a gallon and even higher if you are unfortunate enough to live in California. In early March, gas prices shot up 50 cents in a matter of days, even going up 18 cents on Friday, March 11th alone. Oh, and by the way, all of this happens to coincide with record setting inflation rates at a time when the average American's monthly income is stagnating. So how do we actually get here? It wasn't too long ago when gas prices were well below $3, even during the height of the pandemic. What changed so much in the last year that caused gas prices to become so insanely high? Well, if you turn to our current administration for the answer, what you'll hear is that President Biden had nothing to do with the spike in prices. There's only one villain responsible for this crisis, Russia. Russia is incredibly rich in oil and historically exports more oil than almost any other country on Earth. They account for 11% of the world's oil supply. And when the war in Ukraine began, the US stopped importing oil from Russia, meaning our own oil supply was lowered, which naturally caused prices to go up. So Biden and the White House took that reality and use it as a chance to place the blame of high prices squarely on Russia. Russia is responsible. All while ignoring the broader context that prices had already been going up well before the war disrupted things. The Biden administration claimed that since Putin began his invasion into Ukraine, the gas had gone up 75 cents a gallon. And it was that conflict that was, quote, already hurting American families at the gas pump. When asked about potential solutions to the rising prices, President Biden told the public that, quote, they're going to go up and that, quote, unfortunately, his hands are just tied on the situation. They're going to go up. <laughs> Can't do much right now. The president and his administration were all too happy to place all of the blame for high gas prices on Russia. They even gave it a name, the, quote, Putin price hike. And wouldn't you know it, the media was more than happy to run with that narrative. Multiple mainstream outlets rushed to the defense of Biden, scolding Republicans for blaming the administration and pinning Russia as the sole perpetrator behind the gas crisis. We see, according to them, things were faring perfectly well when it came to gas prices before Putin decided to throw a wrench into the mix. Biden had us on good footing. Putin ruined it all. That was the message that they pushed. And that was the message that the American people heard ad nauseum. Of course, we know that almost all of that is total BS. We know the people who are telling us this narrative are the same people who lied for the last two years about COVID. They're the same people who peddled the Russiagate narrative, trying to burn Trump to the ground on a daily basis, even after it had been discredited. And they're the same ones mindlessly parroting whatever excuse it is that the Biden administration comes up with each week. In this case, that it was Putin to blame for gas prices. The Biden administration and the media will go to whatever length necessary to maintain the leftist agenda, regardless of what's actually true or not, and regardless of whatever the economic costs may be. What is true is that most of the facts are being conveniently left out by the White House and the media. This didn't all start with Russia and Ukraine. Yes, it's definitely true that the Russia-Ukraine conflict has affected oil prices. Russia does account for some of the largest oil supplies in the world, and their invasion certainly contributed in part to prices going up It's supply and demand. So just how much oil were we actually getting from Russia before the war? Is it 50%? Surely it's at least 25%, right? No, before the conflict, we were getting 7% of our oil from Russia. In other words, we never truly needed them for oil at all. You see, what President Biden didn't want people to know is that before he took office, the United States was actually energy independent. During Trump's presidency, the US became a prime exporter of oil and gas was, wouldn't you know it, averaging roughly $2 a gallon. So how do we lose our ability to be independent on energy in just one year? Well, when Biden took office in 2021, he shut down the Keystone XL pipeline project, 
immediately destroying the jobs of thousands of Americans and more importantly, essentially crippling our shot at lasting energy independence. The pipeline would have delivered nearly a million barrels of oil a day from Canada down to refineries in Montana, Nebraska, and Texas. Now that project is dead, along with over 11,000 jobs, and along with our opportunity to be independent from an energy standpoint. The Biden administration also froze oil leases in Alaska's Arctic Refuge, one of the most oil-rich regions in the US, which former President Trump had granted leases to back in 2017 under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Biden's move to freeze those leases was widely criticized at the time by both sides of the aisle. They called it impractical and pointless. And many, including Alaska's governor, Mike Dunleavy, called it a violation of the act itself. It also doesn't help that the Biden administration has gouged out the economy by adding trillions to the national debt. And Biden has proposed $2 trillion more in his Build Back Better program that would, by the way, increase the national debt 24% by 2050 if it's made permanent. That enormous influx of trillions of dollars into the economy in just a few short months left inflation soaring and gas prices rising well before the war in Russia. If only there was hundreds of years of basic economics that could have warned us that shooting trillions of dollars of money into the economy out of nowhere could cause the prices of common goods to rise. But again, no one could have ever warned us. Of course, no one should be surprised by Biden's actions. He's been rallying to destroy the fossil fuel industry for years. He's been quite open about it, actually. In December, he signed an executive order to reach 100% carbon-free energy by 2050 and to ensure 100% of cars are electric by 2035. And during a Democratic primary debate in 2020, he outright swore to end subsidies for the fossil fuel industry and to take drilling permits away. Would you close down the oil industry? I would transition from the oil industry, yes. Oh, I would transition and I'd stop giving to the oil industry, I'd stop giving them federal subsidies. So it seems President Biden and his administration have a clear plan for how they're gonna handle this crisis. They're going to destroy the oil and energy industry and replace it with trillions of dollars in spending on climate programs that have little effect. But at least Stephen Colbert gets to drive around in his Tesla and virtue signal to the rest of us. I'm willing to pay $4 a gallon. Hell, I'll pay $15 a gallon because I drive a Tesla. Thankfully, there are some common sense conservatives that are stepping up to the plate to try and provide real solutions to the problem. Because make no mistake about it, this is a problem and not one that will be solved by gutting America's energy independence. Many Republicans are pushing for a gas tax freeze, which would do exactly what it describes. It would suspend gas taxes and hopefully provide some form of financial relief to the Americans that are struggling under the weight of these high gas prices under the Biden administration. Republican Senator Josh Hawley, for example, recently introduced a bill that would put energy back into American hands. The American Energy Independence Act, which sees the U.S. take back full energy independence. What would your legislation do to restore our energy independence? Tucker, it would reverse the Biden administration policies that have throttled down our energy independence and greenlighted the Russians. So what my bill would do is it would open up new oil and gas leases. They would say that those pipelines that Joe Biden shut down, that they will be reopened. And it would make it the policy of the United States government to make this country energy independent and to get our energy sector producing full throttle. All of those moves would do far more to help gas prices go down than simply blaming Russia. Congress and the White House need to move quickly if this problem is going to be fixed. Every day the gas prices continue to climb, it seems the Biden administration has a new excuse for why. It's not enough to put the blame on other people as opposed to looking in the mirror and realizing what your role in this problem is. It's time to stop playing the blame game and take the steps necessary to make America energy independent again. It's time to make energy affordable again. I'm Cabot Phillips with The Daily Wire. Thanks for watching.